Well, skateboarding, I lived it, I slept it, I breathed it, I dreamed it. From the day that I got my first skateboard to the day I put the first needle in my arm. I met Novak at Cheap Skates when I was about 12 years old. He was with Bucky Lasik, which was like one of my favorite skaters. Bucky Lasik, he wrote for Pal at the time. He certainly saw the skills that I had and he recognized something in me. Bucky was creating moves on vert that no one had ever done and, and very few people have done since. He was telling me about this kid in Baltimore, Brandon Novak. Yeah, I mean, he was basically my little sidekick that I, we just skated all the time. He was mentoring him for the most part and grooming him for a skate career. Whenever you saw Brandon, you're like, whoa! That's really unbelievable for a kid to do that kind of thing. He was uh, the innocent little cute kid that shredded. When he turned about 15, like he just kind of disappeared and I would ask Bucky when I'd run into him, like, where the hell's Novak? Like, what's he up to? Like, I think he's on heroin. I started realizing Brandon was kind of getting into stuff when he wasn't, uh, when he started being out of touch. He was talking to me saying, you know, Derek, everything's cool. And, you know, you heard the rumors that everything really wasn't. And my life was slowly going downhill. My friends that were my true friends slowly faded away. There was at one point Mike Valley, but he knew that I had some drugs on me. And we were driving on this tour, we were going state to state in a minivan, and a demo Mike Valley comes and he says, look, I know you got some weed, maybe some other things on you. Get rid of them right now. We can't be driving, it's not safe with that on us. And I threw it down a gutter of the demo, and that night after the demo was done, I got these girls to take me back to get my drugs out of the gutter. I was too high to skate. I remember one time I did it anyway, it was Halloween, I did a demo. And I literally stopped in the middle of the demo and just threw up right on the, on the fucking course, you know? And I get a phone call one day, and it's Mike Valley. He said, Novak, we have two options we could do with you. So the ultimatum's now on the table. Clean up or remove myself from the team. And it's something I worked so hard for since probably six years old. I didn't even have a full breath of air in my lungs before I said I'm done. That day, not only did I quit my sponsor, I quit. Caring, I quit believing, I quit having hope in anything. It was just so easy just to get high. Now that I'm off pal, I have no more responsibilities. So I decided I needed to go out and celebrate. <laughs> That's so fucking sick, man. I celebrated by quitting my love long dream. That was really the, I think, the saddest part about. Brandon's life in that had he maintained his skating, he could have really made a career out of it. <laughs> What's that, a school picture? Yeah, with these American flags. <laughs> this is when Brandon was starting to get bad. Gotcha. And this is when Brandon was bad. <laughs> what, what is he dressed he up for He was in a here? wedding. Oh, okay. He was a ring bearer. You know, he's a cute kid with a normal childhood. You could see that. What is the first memory where you knew that Brandon was using drugs or involved in drugs? I had no idea until Brandon was in the seventh grade and a man came knocking on the front door with his son who was in Brandon's class. And he said, your son has my son's skateboard and I want it back. 
I said, what? It seems like Brandon had sold this kid drugs. The kid didn't come through with the money, so he took the kid's skateboard. That's the first time I had any idea anything crazy was going on. But you know, I found bongs and um, the roach clips and the papers and, and then the pot and the, the, the little pink bags and the pills. She would tell me over and over, like, you're, you're killing me. And I was so fucking selfish. Then I you know, started doing everything in my power. Totally depleted my savings account to meetings, to counselors. So I just kind of like ran over her because I knew I could. I would get him out of rehab get home, no sooner than we were home, he'd be right out on the front street making another drug deal. I knew I could manipulate her. She was an easy scam. Why did he get thrown out of high school? Drugs. I would rob from her purse. I, you know, I just robbed her blind. I was sleeping with my coat, my car keys, my pocketbook in bed with me. We made a date. For, she was gonna meet me at the marina at seven o'clock. That's our first date. And she's all in tears. And she says her son, Brandon, had taken her car and had wrecked it. So that was my first experience with Brandon. I had the whole back bedroom full of Christmas gifts wrapped up for my grandchildren. Stole every single Christmas present out of the house. His mother became aware that some checks were missing out of her checkbook. And then I got a letter in the mail saying you were overdrawn by so many thousand. I said, what? It was like taking fucking candy from a two-year-old. She does anything he wants to do whenever he wants to do it, and there's never any consequence to it. I wasn't worried about the consequences. My top priority was the cash for the dope. Pat told me that you know he had a drug problem, and she has three children, two are wonderful. And my daughter, who is a lovely girl, married to a wonderful boy from a good family, all physicians. One's a lawyer. And a son that's an attorney in Washington, D.C. And she's got this bad seed. My son's taken him into his home. My daughter's taken him into the home. He steals from them. He'd jump in bed with me. He'd be so crazy high. I think I was a girl, a girlfriend, you know what I mean? I'd say, get out, get out, get out, Brandon. I've never seen him care about anything but himself. I bailed him out from, of jail from Colorado to Texas to New York. The last time he got out of one of the jails and I sent him money to get a plane home, he never even got out of the airport. BWI that he got arrested again. He got arrested in the airport? At the airport for bringing drugs. He just got out of jail. So he went to make a deal in a very bad, bad end of town and he got beat up, bleeding his face. He was busted up, he was beat up so bad. The drug dealers were calling and threatening my life on the phone. It was just Brandon and I living there. They were appearing at my house at night. He said, are you Novak's mother? And I said, yes. He said, we want the money. And then that's when I said, I have to change the locks. And she just changed the locks. And when I came in, she talked to me through the door. She said, I can't do it anymore, Brandon. Like, I physically and mentally cannot do it. You're killing me. And she was crying the whole time she did it. God knows she didn't want to do it. And I knew how bad I was, but the only thing that mattered was getting another fix. And once I got a fix, everything was better again, <laughs> as it's sick. The kid was tearing my heart out of my body, and I couldn't do anything about it. She actually said she felt better when she knew he was in jail, because at least she knew he wasn't dead on the street. She actually thought every time the phone rang or somebody knocked at the door, especially later at night, they were coming to tell her. And as horrible as it sounds, every night I'd go to bed, I'd wait for the call. And I'd wait for the call, and I'd wait for the call. And so many nights I'd go to bed and I'd say, I can't stand it anymore, let me get the call tonight. What do you mean the call? That he was dead. What a mess. It's, it's so amazing to me that like one white little powder can ruin whole lives. Not just one, but like whole lives. It just doesn't seem right.